What's up everyone, Adam from Cape Crawlers, and today we got our hands on some more Fury Tech goodies. We've got the Cedar brushless motor and the Python Pro ESC. Got a good one for you today, guys. The next iteration of the Fury Tech Electronics is here. We got the Cedar Inrunner brushless motor. I'm super excited for this. And we got the Python Pro ESC. These two together are going to be a killer combo in our SCX24s. I can't wait to try it out. Fury Tech is on a tear lately, just putting out awesome products. And this new Inrunner motor is definitely noteworthy. This is going to give you a high efficiency, great heat dissipating motor with a waterproof design. And it still maintains a small and compact can size that we can fit in our mini crawlers without sacrificing a lot of space or having to do a lot of chassis modifications to get this in here. So the Python Pro is the successor to the Python, which I reviewed not too long ago. The Pro comes with some additional enhancements, both aesthetically and mechanically, that we're gonna go over in a little bit. But these are top of the line, brand new upgrades. I'm super excited to get into it. So let's open these up. We'll take a closer look at these and then we'll install them in a rig and see how they perform. So let's check them out. Let's open these things up and take a look. Let's look at the Python Pro first. So the Python Pro comes in this plastic case. It does come with the wires here. We've got our three pin connector to plug into your receiver. And we've also got a battery extension cable here Looking at this thing, this red anodized case is unique to the Python Pro. The Python will come in the black plastic, very similar design and overall shape and size, but the Python Pro has this very nice aluminum case. Completely waterproof design, has this external switch to turn it off and on. Internal Bluetooth, able to run up to 8.4 volts, so you can run some big servos on this with no issues whatsoever. We've demonstrated the capabilities of this ESC on two standard size servos at high voltage with little to no issues. So it's very, very powerful. The Python Pro is also able to run up to 4S on this thing. Now I don't have a 4S battery to try. I wish I did. So we'll have to stick to 2 and 3S, but that is one feature that is also unique to the Python Pro is that you get to run the 4S batteries. Next up, let's look at the Cedar. Inrunner motor. This is very cool. So the kit that I got comes with the aluminum mount. This is very similar to the micro Komodo mount. It looks like it has the, the red anodized aluminum with the raw edges and the carbon fiber piece here. Not sure if it's exactly the same as the micro Komodo, but it looks very, very similar. Now the motor itself, this thing is super cool. You don't really see inrunners on our size little crawlers. So this is a very cool addition from Fury Tech. The look of this thing is exceptional. It's got a beautiful look to it with the black and red design. This very space age artistic look on the front it does come with the pinion gear already pressed on. This is a 3400 kV motor with 3450 and still very small. So it's going to be able to fit inside our builds really nicely without a lot of cutting and hacking of your chassis to get this thing in here. So typically with an inrunner design, you get a smaller diameter, but you get a longer can. You're able to run higher RPMs because it allows the rotor to make one full rotation faster because it's a smaller diameter that it's rotating around. You do typically sacrifice torque in an inrunner motor compared to an outrunner motor, but you also gain efficiency in the way of heat dissipation because of the longer canister and the way these are designed, they're better at dissipating the heat and keeping the motor cool. So it's better for overall efficiency and longevity. Also, because it's an inrunner and all the magnets and everything are inside the can, this is sealed, making it waterproof. So depending on what you were running for your receiver, you could potentially have a fully 
waterproof system here with these two components. That's something that we've not been able to achieve with other brushless motors from FuryTech in the past, at least not on these smaller scales. Let me try to do some size comparisons for you guys. So the Bronco build over here, this has the OG Komodo, the big Komodo in it here. And when we compare these two here, you can very clearly see how much smaller the Cedar is. Now it does have the longer canister on it. So like I said earlier, the in runners are typically longer, but smaller in diameter. And that's very apparent here. When you look at the Komodo is much stubbier, but overall much bigger. And here you can really see some of the differences between the in runner and the out runner. So the out runner here, which is what the Komodo is, you've got the outside of the case spins with the rotor because it's got the magnets right on the inside of this case here. So the whole thing spins. And you can also see that it's got these vents all around it. And while those look really cool and you can see the wiring on the inside, it looks very futuristic and, and it's cool to see this motor spin up. But it's designed that way for heat dissipation because these motors, the way they're designed, there's not a lot of way for the heat to dissipate effectively. So we've got to put these vents inside the case so that the heat can escape. But that means you can get debris, you can get water in there. Not ideal for an off-road crawler if you're going to be taking it in wet and nasty conditions. Whereas the in-runner design, just because of how they're designed, it's got the longer can, the magnets on the inside. It's much better at dissipating heat. and It's overall more efficient. And you can seal that case up so nothing gets in it. Probably the most direct comparison is the Micro Komodo. Again, outrunner style. You can see the whole canister spinning there. And again, it does have the vents and the holes in the front of it. It's hard to see in there. I should have taken this out, but I hope you get the gist of it there. We look at the Cedar against the Micro Komodo. These are very comparable in size. So the Cedar is indeed longer and larger in diameter than the Micro Komodo, but not by a huge amount. They are pretty comparable in size. I would say that the Cedar is probably 15-ish percent bigger, not a whole lot bigger by any means. So that means that we're going to be able to squeeze this into a lot of builds without a lot of modification. So overall, very cool, very well designed motor. And I'm super excited to try this thing out. So we're going to put this motor and ESC combo in the Slayer build. Now, if you've seen the Slayer build, you'll know that I did a brushed motor with the Fury Tech ESC. And that works great for excellent slow crawl and great control. But with the brushed motor, I'm just lacking that wheel speed. So I'm really excited to try out the cedar in this build i'm hoping that we can keep and or improve our super slow speed control and also get some more top end wheel speed so that i can get up and over some aggressive obstacles which is really critical with this long wheelbase so with that let's get to the install and try these things out Here we are with the Cedar installed with the Python Pro. This initially went really well. And then I got into troubles trying to close the body up because the Python is actually pretty big. It had the Lizard Ultimate in here before. And I was running the FlySky GT5 setup. And even though I went to the near microscopic Radio Link micro receiver here, which is tremendously smaller than the Fly Sky. The Python Pro, with its larger size than the Lizard Ultimate, and the way I had to mount the Cedar backwards and kind of in the center, didn't leave me with a lot of room. So it was really difficult to get the electronics sorted out. Whether or not I'll be able to keep 
the Python Pro in this build. I'm not sure. It depends on how this works when I get the roof closed in. But everything is on there now. And we're ready to fire this thing up. I've been in the app. I've got it all tuned. It's ready to go. It is running. I've got it synced to my radio link transmitter here. So why don't we give this thing a whirl and see how it goes. So let's check it out. Look at the slow crawl on it. Wow. The last micro in runner I tried was the Spectrum Firma unit, and it certainly did not crawl like this. One thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that there is no lurch when you get out of the FOC range. It feels completely linear. As I squeeze the throttle. So also with the Python, I got the 8.4 volts on this Mighty Chihuahua servo. Very fast, very, very fast. Oh, this is impressive. Oh man, look at that. Silky smooth. Oh, <laughs> this is awesome. All right, I'm gonna see if I can get this body situated, get all this closed up, and then we'll hit the course with it and see how this thing performs. Here we go. We got the cedar on the course, everything situated in the build. I am pumped for this. The smoothness of this motor is no joke. By far the smoothest motor I've experienced from Fury Tech. Right out of the box. I mean, I haven't done anything to the telemetry. Very minimal settings on the throttle, punch, all that good stuff. But it's just so linear. And like I said before, there's just no abruptness when you break out of that FOC range, when you move through the power curve, it's seamless. And that is such a relief because there is no tuning that needs to be done, no frustration, just awesome. Awesomeness, <laughs> what it is. Look at this thing go. Happy I was able to get everything squeezed in there with the Slayer chassis. There's that wheel speed I needed. This thing's got some punch too. Awesome. Man, this thing's a monster. Looks great in there too. I'm thankful I was able to get it fit in there very easy. This Texoma Slayer chassis with the configurations you're able to do, I was able to just swap the motor around backwards. Don't have to take the skid plate off because it's a reversible design so you can just flip your motor around no problem and it works just fine. So was able to just drop it right in and go. Pretty easy install. dropping down when we check out some of the challenge lines over here on mini Moab see how this thing does this gatekeeper here to the escalator would be a good one to test oh getting that wheel speed 
crushes that gatekeeper, no issue. And then able to slow it down just smooth and steady over that, very good. And work our way over here to Hell's Gate. And here we go. No issues there. Another angle here. Just to leisurely stroll up the hardest line on the course. <laughs> no problem. So it's interesting, I'm getting quite a bit of heat out of the Python, but very little heat out of the motor. The Cedar motor itself still feels very cool to the touch, hardly even warm. But I can feel through the roof that the Python's heating up. So I might want to turn that voltage down. No running issues at all, and it's not like hot, hot, but it's definitely putting out some heat. Oh, this, look at this thing, holy cow. This setup is outrageous, what an amazing combo. This thing is so capable right now, this setup, there's just really not much in here that can even challenge it whatsoever. This is a crazy hip line here. Look at that thing stick like glue. Man, and the power delivery, just able to navigate that so easy, so impressive. Out here on the outdoor rock course in the backyard, it's been raining all day. I think it was raining the last time that I put this layer together, but I got a break in the raindrops, so we're gonna try the cedar out on the rocks today. It's wet and slippery and nasty, but we'll see how this thing does. Oh, still managed to grip. It's the FOC at work there. You can come up against an obstacle. Basically torque matches to keep your steady speed going. Man, such a weapon. Still running this on 2S. I don't have a battery, a 3S battery that will fit in my spot there, unfortunately. I'd love to try it on 2 or 4S with the Python, but I have to wait for another day until I get some smaller batteries. Look at this thing go. This terrain is so greasy and this thing's still just gripping and going. That extra wheel speed sure is nice in this build too. This thing is dangerous right now. Holy moly. Gosh, the ability to navigate the throttle curve with this Cedar motor is just incredible. By far the easiest out of any Fury Tech motor that I've come across.
you can just traverse the power curve so easily. There's no hitches, nothing. No abruptness at any point in the curve. Well, I'm impressed, to say the least. I'm going to head inside, give you guys my final thoughts. I think you know what I'm going to say, but we're going to wrap this up now. It's hard to overstate how good the Cedar motor is. It is, without a doubt, the best motor that Fury Tech has available today. And it is arguably the best piece of hardware Fury Tech has released since the Lizard Pro. The way this thing delivers power, the torque and the smoothness on the low end, but the linear and consistent delivery of power throughout the entire power band, is just incredible. There is no abruptness, there is no hitching, there's no cogging. It just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. And it'll go as smooth and as slow as you want it to go. And that's with no adjustments on the throttle curve, next to no adjustments at all in the Fury Car app. It is really a plug and play game changer for your build. Not only is the performance spectacular with the in-runner design, now you've got a waterproof design. It's also small enough and compact enough that it'll fit a variety of different builds. It doesn't put out a lot of heat. It's very efficient. In fact, the Python Pro put out a lot more heat than the motor did itself. So overall, I think this is a fantastic system. When you pair the Cedar motor with the Python Pro, which is an incredible piece of hardware itself, you've got a one-two punch combo that will knock your socks off. My only complaint about this motor is that Fury Tech doesn't offer a trade-in program because now I'm going to have to buy three or four other of these motors to put them in my other builds. Cedar motor is now available on Fury Tech's website in a variety of different options. You can get the motor itself. You can get a motor with the pinion gear set up for the TRX 4M. You can get the motor with the mount like what I had today. You can get it with the stellar transmission combo. There's a variety of different ways that you can now get this motor and I'll put the link down below for all of the options. Same with the Python. You can also get the Python Pro, the Python. That's also available at Fury Tech's website, and I will link that down below too. But let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of this killer combo? Is it the best combo that Fury Tech has made? I think so, but definitely let me know what you think. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so, and I will see you in the next video.